Don't you hate it when you're gaming and your PC starts slowing down or even crashing and shutting down? And if it's hot where you live, and it will be soon for most of the Northern Hemisphere because summer is upon us, finally, it could be because your PC is starting to thermal throttle and it's getting too hot. But in today's video, I'll be showing you how to combat this with some steps which will not cost any money and they just take a bit of time. And hopefully, if you follow some of these steps, you should be okay gaming in the summer months. With hotter ambient temps comes hotter PC temps. It's just a matter of physics to be fair because your PC will never be colder than the actual temperature outside unless if you're using liquid nitrogen or some obscure knife edge cooling mechanism or method I guess. But as the ambient temperature climbs, so does the temperature of your computing component and this is why you have to have a bit of thermal headroom when you're in the winter if you're building your PC then because when it comes to the summer months it's going to be running hotter and if it starts running hot this can lead to a few things like louder fans is probably the most minimum one here and then thermal throttling and if it gets way too hot it will shut down like completely it will just turn off also running your components at consistently high temperatures does them no favors at all it can degrade the silicon quality so you might have to feed it more voltage to sustain your clocks or you might have to undervolt it and underclock it also it could lead to a premature death of your hardware so make sure you just keep them cool so if you want to avoid these interruptions and avoid a total catastrophe of your hardware dying prematurely make sure you stay tuned for this video step one is simply just give your pc a clean if it's the spring months you should do it as a part of your spring cleaning if i'm honest and a pc is a tool it's designed to be maintained so if you maintain it it will look after you this is because if you don't clean it out dust will start to clump up in radiators in your dust filters and even your heat sinks and stuff like that and it just does you no favors because it's going to reduce the airflow and therefore it's going to increase the temperature of your components so if you get them dust bunnies all cleaned out from your heat sinks radiators and dust filter you should be running automatically at lower temperatures because it's a very easy job to do it only takes about 10 minutes to clean it like that and if you use something like a compressed air or an air compressor make sure it's not one of them industrial ones because you can actually damage components with that also if you haven't cleaned your thermal paste out for a good few years i'm talking about four years three years here it might be time to get it cleaned out this is because after time thermal paste does dry up and it gets all cracked up and it just looks horrible and this causes it to lose its thermal conductivity and this as you guessed it does lead to higher temperatures it's a relatively lengthy process especially for graphics cards but don't worry i have you covered because i did make a video on that recently so if you want to clean out your graphics card properly and effectively i have made a video for it and it should be up there or there the same process can be applied to cpus them a bit easier if i'm honest especially if you've got like an aio like mine it's just four screws well in this case it's two screws you pop it off clean the thermal paste off the ihs of the cpu put some new thermal paste on and you're good to go. I would class all of this as just general maintenance. It's stuff that you should be doing anyway, if I'm honest. As I've said, a PC is a tool and it needs to be maintained to be kept at its operational performance, optimum. Optimum was the word I was looking for there. But yeah, they need to be maintained to make sure that they're performing properly and effectively. So just make sure you clean them out. Also, as I mentioned as well, make sure you clean out the dust filter because a lot of people do forget to clean their dust filters and a lot of dust can get caked onto them and that massively reduces airflow if you have a solid front panel like my nzxt h700 it might be worth just simply taking the front panel off of it i say this because it does a great job of obstructing airflow if i'm honest and yeah usually in the summer months i do take the front panel off my case because it does actually make a pretty i wouldn't say substantial difference i would say it's fairly minor i've been talking about five degrees on the gpu but five degrees for doing one simple thing is pretty substantial i guess also if you need some extra performance at the cost of your pc getting a bit more dusty you can also remove the front dust filter 
this will yes it will increase the dust and you'll have to clean it more often but the dust filter does ever so slightly obstruct airflow but at this point we just it's barely negligible so one thing to note though if you do have an airflow focused case like a fractal design mesh if i see or anything with a mesh front panel there's no point in doing this you won't get any performance benefit as the case is already designed for airflow this step is mainly for people that have got cases like me some of the older nzxt cases have like flat solid front panels so that's where this tip is useful if you're a new PC builder or you've got a pre-built, this one probably doesn't apply to you, but if you're more of an enthusiast, it probably does. And that is overclocking. If your CPU or GPU are overclocked, odds are it's producing a lot more heat than what it is actually designed to produce. And that's because when you overclock, you are forcing more voltage and more wattage into the CPU, which does result in more performance, but it does result in a lot more heat as well. And this is why I'd recommend if you've got an overclocked CPU or GPU and you are struggling with the temperatures, dial them back or even just remove them completely because I would rather have a GPU or CPU that runs at base speeds but it doesn't thermal throttle than a CPU or GPU that runs overclocked and it does thermal throttle and you'll probably get much better performance at the base speed anyway without the thermal throttling. So yeah, if you're struggling with temperatures and you're overclocked, dial them back or just remove them entirely and maybe do the next step as well because the next step is a good one. And that's because it's undervolting. Over the past few years, undervolting has gotten very popular amongst PC builders. And for good reason, you're basically getting the same performance and you're using a lot less power. That is because the premise of undervolting is reducing the voltage which your CPU and GPU use. And for instance, with my RTX 3080 here, I've got it undervolted by about 125 millivolts and I've still got it clocked at 1860 megahertz. So it's still above the boost speed and it's using a lot less voltage. So for CPUs, you undervolt in the BIOS, but do be aware some motherboards and manufacturers do lock this down depending on what chipset you're using. So I believe Intel does lock it down on some B series chipsets, I believe, don't quote me on that. And AMD is pretty relaxed with it. It depends on the CPU, of course, but for the most part, it is done in the motherboard's BIOS. And for GPUs, they're a bit more open with this, if I'm honest. I do it in a third-party program called MSI Afterburner, and I recommend any PC gamer to have that installed on their system. I am working on a undervolting guide for graphics cards, so if you wanna see that, make sure you stay subscribed and turn notifications on because I will get that out to you. And undervolting is like the holy grail of PC mods or tuning, I guess, at this point, because not only does it reduce temperature, it will reduce system sounds like coil wine, especially on graphics cards. And if all else fails and none of it is satisfactory, try increasing your fan speeds. This is probably the least best sort of pleasant one, I guess, because it does result in a much louder system. But I would rather have a system that's loud than one that is literally cooking to death. But systems automatically ramp up fans. I hear you screaming in the comments below. Yes, that is true, but I believe they do not do it enough. And that's because most fan curves out of the box do focus more towards silence than performance, which I can kind of understand why, because a lot of people do like quieter systems, but I'd rather have my system running a bit louder because I've just got headphones on anyway, so yeah, I don't mind if it runs loud. So yeah, this one isn't technically ideal, but if you've got headphones on, especially if they're closed back, something like these steel series, and as long as they're not open back, like Bay Dynamics or something like that, you should be fine with increasing your fan speeds ever so slightly. So if you follow some of these tips, hopefully your PC temperatures should be under control. And if not, I suggest you should invest in a better cooler for your CPU if that's getting a bit hot. And if your GPU is still running hot, I don't know how to help you with that because if you clean it and you've got good airflow in your case and your GPU is still running hot, maybe you've just got a GTX 480 or something because there's literally nothing you can do with that 
burnness of a GPU. Some of these will work better than others. Like I believe the one that will work the most if your PC is dusty is cleaning it out and putting some new thermal paste on it. And if you've got an overclock, removing that as well will help out drastically. But if some of these apply to you and you apply the methods to cool down your PC, you should be just fine if you follow some of these steps. And if your CPU is still running hot after all of these steps, you might need to get a better cooler for it because I know some of these new CPUs, especially the Intel ones, 12th and 13th gen, do run very hot indeed. So if you apply some of these tips to your PC, hopefully you should be working and gaming without interruption from the PC, that is, maybe your environment is disturbing you a bit as I am subject to, but that is something I cannot help with. So if you like this one, like it, stay subscribed for more tech content, and I'll catch you in the next one. I did have a cold in this video as well, so I don't know if you could tell by the sniffly nose, but I am getting better now, and uh, hopefully the videos are going to carry on coming.